there's a reason for you to receive this. Now, is everyone gonna receive it? Of course not. It's why he said, if you will. But if you will receive it, there's something for you. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstrott. Thanks for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you, then consider becoming a partner with us. There are some things that Jesus said that he ought not to have said because someone might believe him. And I posit that he said them expressly for that purpose that someone would believe them. Mm. Now, an example here is in Mark chapter 9, verse 23. And Jesus said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Mm -hmm. Now, if you took that for face value, what Jesus said, then he's saying all things are possible to him that believes he must have wanted to imprint that on your psyche or he wouldn't have said it you are a believer are you not yeah all things are possible unto you did you hear that yes who's it possible to the believer you are a believer all things are possible unto you how many things All things. oh come on you can't believe that you can't believe Jesus was actually saying that he actually did say it mm -hmm. all right yeah oh it's not possible then you are not a believer you can see why he ought not have said it because somebody's gonna believe that yep. they're gonna go around thinking everything's possible to them another thing that jesus ought not to have said because someone may believe it is him jesus directly and repeatedly speaking of the holy ghost as a divine person who would come after him mm -hmm. so that when jesus leaves another one say another one, another one. not the same one another one is going to come after him <laughs> who is an actual person mm -hmm. and who is God someone might believe that well I personally believe that Jesus didn't misspeak here but that was exactly the point in fact John chapter 4 verse 24 says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth Jesus said this so these statements were not erroneous slips of the tongue was Jesus just having a slip of the tongue when he said certain things no. no he said them intentionally and they were designed to do specific work in the believer mm -hmm. and I apologize this one tonight may be somewhat difficult to swallow but like the other two things I just mentioned belief here on this will take you someplace that you could not go without it Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5 when he cometh into the world he saith sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not but a body hast thou prepared me who was this talking about coming into the world Jesus, Jesus right wherefore when he cometh into the world so we can see that jesus we all know this jesus existed before he came into the earth right yes. mm -hmm. where did he exist in heaven with the father mm -hmm. right yeah. it says when he cometh into the world he saith a body hast thou prepared me so here's jesus he's about ready to come into the world and god prepares a body for him that he could enter into that body still the same guy still same Jesus in a new body say same Jesus, same Jesus. New, body. new body right yeah. are you here mm -hmm. am I making this up 
well the Douay rhymes translation says a body hast thou fitted me and I like that God fits the body to you and Jesus came in and he fit the body to him God fits the body to you the person and there is no mismatch oh I was putting the wrong body no you weren't the body is fitted to you the person you are alive and the body is fitted to you okay mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 before say before, before. what's before? before well that's before what we're about ready to read yeah. before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee mm. is this in your Bible before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations before now we know that Jesus existed before yeah. and then came into a body God fitted the right body to Jesus mm -hmm. say God yeah fitted the right body to Jesus but this is not Jesus is Jeremiah Jesus no no we see the same thing happening here before he formed his body in the womb he knew him now I don't know you can misinterpret that if you want I'm just saying some things that are intentionally stretching you because we have somewhere to go say we have, we have somewhere, somewhere to, go. to go but this is not Jesus this is Jeremiah we know Jesus existed before and God fitted a body to him well what about Jeremiah mm. it seems so this message is designed to stretch you but not break you Jesus put it this way if thou canst receive if you can receive it it will stretch you here if I expand my faith here I can end up here where my faith is supposed to be expanded unto if thou canst receive it does that make sense if I cannot receive it then I can't go to where that thing Jesus said would take me is that right mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 17 verse 9 and as they came down from the mountain Jesus charged them saying tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead verse 10 and his disciples asked him saying why then say the scribes that Elijah must first come and Jesus answered and said unto them Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things verse 12 but I say unto you who's saying this Jesus. Jesus but I say unto you that Elijah has come already and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them verse 13 and then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist Jesus was speaking about Elijah and they understood that Elijah was John the Baptist say Elijah, Elijah was John the Baptist. John the Baptist now just before this they're talking about this vision look back at verse 1 Matthew chapter 17 verse 1 and after six days Jesus takes with him Peter James and John his brother and brings them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the Sun and his raiment was white as the light and behold verse 3 and behold there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him Luke's version of this said that they were speaking to him about his decease in Jerusalem so they appeared to him Moses and Elijah mm -hmm. say Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah 
appeared to Jesus and were talking to Jesus about what was about to happen in Jerusalem him being crucified mm -hmm. are you here yeah this is something that John the Baptist had just been through yeah. he had just been he just had his head removed by Herod mm -hmm. and then we see him back in heaven talking to Jesus about what Jesus is gonna have to go through are you getting this mm -hmm. can you see how much of a comfort that might be yeah. having a friend who knows what you're going through and has just been through that mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 3 for Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias sake his brother Philip's wife man she must have been something else huh yeah. verse 4 for John said unto him it is not lawful for thee to have her and verse 5 and when he would have put him to death he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet verse 6 but Herod's birthday was kept and the daughter of Herod Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod verse 7 whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask and she being before instructed of her mother said give me here John Baptist's head in a charger pretty gruesome yeah. verse 9 and the king was sorry nevertheless for the oaths sake and then which sat with him at meat he commanded to give it to her verse 10 and he sent and beheaded John in the prison and his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel and she brought it to her mother John the Baptist mm -hmm. Jesus's cousin do you suppose Jesus knew John the Baptist yes. he knew John the Baptist he, he knew of him he knew of his ministry he was baptized of him he knew him say he knew him, he knew him. so when Elijah shows up on the Mount of Transfiguration a few chapters later and Jesus says that's John the Baptist did Jesus just not know what he's talking about or would someone like or would someone listen to what Jesus is saying and believe him yeah. we're going somewhere here I mean the Baptist should be all over this right. but are they I don't think so I tell you in researching this and looking this at, at what actually was going on here when Jesus said John the Baptist was the greatest of all the prophets no kidding yeah. he knew what he was talking about because I always thought well how there's John the Baptist yeah he came yeah he did some stuff he baptized a bunch of people he got things ready for Jesus but when you look at this whole other layer of what was actually going on John the Baptist was the greatest of all the prophets yeah. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 9 but what went you out for to see a prophet yea I say unto you more than a prophet for this is he of whom it is written behold I send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare thy way before thee now when he appeared to him on the Mount of Transfiguration was he still preparing the way before Jesus yes because he was preparing Jesus for his upcoming demise in Jerusalem yeah. are you still here mm -hmm verse 11 verily I say unto you among them that are born of women say born of women. born of women among them that are born of women there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he verse 12 from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence taken by force verse 13 for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John verse 14 and if you will receive it this is Elijah which was for to come did Jesus say that mm -hmm. he said this is Elijah who is Elijah John the, Baptist. John the Baptist he didn't say he's he's sort of like Elijah 
he kind of acts a little like he was acting nothing like elijah as far as we know from elijah before mm -hmm. but this is elijah this is a light does your bible say that yeah mm -hmm. let me read it again if you will receive it this is elijah now there must be a reason he would say that he's not just slipping of the tongue and interjecting some weirdness there's a reason for you to receive this say there's a reason, there's a reason. For, me for me to receive it to receive now it. is everyone going to receive it no. of course not it's why he said if you will mm -hmm. but if you will receive it there's something for you yeah. are you here yeah. well first of all why did he say to them among them that are born of women there's not risen a greater what kind of a statement is that who's not born of a woman right right but why is he saying it it doesn't need to be said unless there's a reason for him saying that because a lot John the Baptist was born of a woman in a way that as far as we know that it was pretty specific mm -hmm. he was Elijah lived a full life as a prophet went up into heaven without dying and then was reborn as John the Baptist if you can receive it if you will receive it it's like what no wonder I haven't been receiving it this is some next level stuff that the Holy Ghost does. the Holy Ghost doesn't have a problem with it he wrote it in his Bible but there's a reason and I hope I hope you're staying with me because there's a reason that he said this he didn't just say it for no reason and Jesus said there's no greater than John born of a woman verse 14 again and if you will receive it this is Elijah is Jesus lying no. or is he telling you the truth maybe a truth that you weren't quite prepared to receive a truth that you had to stretch your understanding of reality to grasp a hold of yeah. Yeah. not a big deal for the Holy Ghost because he lives outside of time and space it's no big deal for him yeah. all things are possible to you the believer is this fun yet yeah. it's certainly interesting it was like what I got more yeah we are believing things for the benefits mm -hmm. say we believe things we believe for the, benefits, for the benefits for the benefit of believing those things yeah. and Jesus said certain things that a lot of people don't receive and therefore they can't have the benefit of it mm -hmm. and he didn't say this about John the Baptist and Elijah mm -hmm. unless there was a benefit to believing it if you will receive it yeah. and you that receives it gets a benefit that you that didn't receive it can't even understand or go to we are believing things for the benefits what if you believe that by Jesus stripes you were healed what's the benefit of believing that well healing why because that was built into that verse of Scripture by Jesus stripes he bore your sickness mm -hmm. right yeah the benefit of believing that is being healed belief that Jesus existed before he came into the body and had a body fitted to him has benefits to it believing that Elijah existed and lived an entire life went up into heaven and then came back into a body that was fitted specifically for him there's benefits to believing that listen it's epoch changing benefits it's an epoch changing belief and it was not for their time but it was for ours it's for our time to believe this it's about time that someone began believing this why to have the benefits are you yeah. <laughs> ah, Elijah lived a fairly furtive life by anyone's standard mm -hmm. on the first go-round 
told you this is just to stretch you to believe something that people just don't know about is that possible yes is it possible that you don't know everything yes oh is that that's probably the most possible thing <laughs> there could possibly be is me not knowing everything you wouldn't think so with most Christians because you present actual words of Jesus. I'm telling them, have I read anything that's not a word of Jesus? I'm just pointing things out to you so we can believe something and go farther than we were before. Yeah. So, Elijah here, 2 Kings. You don't really know exactly what you're going to get when I start preaching, do you? No. We know this whole situation here, right? 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And several things went on here, and the prophets all said, Don't you know to Elisha that your master is going to be taken up today? And he says, Yes, I know. Hold your peace. Right? And then eventually he says, If you see me go up, then you can have, because Elijah, Elisha wanted to have twice the anointing that, Elijah had you know the story right verse 11 and it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven alive yes. it wasn't a death chariot it came from God and he went up into heaven are you here yeah. so after this happened where was Elijah in heaven. he was in heaven yeah. he lived a, a very furtive life while he was here doing miracles serving God right mm -hmm. saying thus says the Lord lots of great things you can read all about it read all about it and then he went up into heaven and that's where he was for a good amount of time yeah. but I posit to you that between then and Jesus's conception by the Virgin Mary this conversation took place it must have happened that Elijah said I will go right yeah. I will go and prepare the way God would have been looking for somebody to prepare the way oh look look at uh, you know where the New Testament is right just flip back one page and two verses mm -hmm. Malachi 4 verse 5 behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord and then you know a verse later and they have the New Testament Jesus shows up so before this before this happened before Jesus came there had to be this conversation between God and Elijah and Jesus because Elijah's in heaven are you here yeah. am I making this clear enough yes and he would have had to say I will go God doesn't force anything on anyone he says I will go I'll go down there I'll be you know the one that prepares the way well no one will preach on this but we must go where others dare not in order to go where others cannot go we must believe things that others refuse to believe and we do that specifically things I've already said certain things Jesus said that people just don't believe can you imagine that as a believer there are certain things Jesus said that people just don't believe sure. oh, yeah. what's wrong with them sure. they're non-believers yeah. and they look at me like oh you believe that well I can't believe that well you're not a believer is it possible for a man to live a life a full good full life and then be caught up into heaven alive we have other examples of that too mm -hmm. and then be born again on earth in another body Elijah did it Amen. all things are possible are you here yeah. Can you see how that stretches you because you're thinking I don't see how 
it just because you don't see how doesn't mean that's not in God's purview he does things like this he did that and I believe it my belief in it opens up to me a whole different realm of benefit than anyone else can have because they don't believe it are you here Jesus said if 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 you he said if you can receive it who's he talking to you? you if you can receive it why would Jesus say that there must be something to it that has an effect on you has a benefit in your life if you receive it it must do something to you yeah. now <laughs> I'm not saying that you have to believe and receive this in order to die and go to heaven obviously not people have been not believing this and receiving it for thousands of years and they die and go to heaven but you may have to believe and receive this in order to not die and go to heaven did you hear that well do we have another example you ever heard of Enoch Enoch walked with God and was not for God took him he didn't die he just went up and is there is it possible for Enoch to therefore enter into another body and live another life on earth it you can't say it's not possible if you say it's not possible you're not a believer <laughs> see how I started this out mm -hmm. well Enoch is a type of the last day church have you heard me preach on this what's that type of the last day Enoch Enoch his life his life of living on the earth and then being caught up to heaven is a type of the last day church who's the last day church we are. use the last day church you think you're gonna get there without believing these things no. I told you I just try to stretch you out a little bit brother I've never been stretched this way before I say I say boy why would Jesus say those things if he wasn't trying to stretch you if those words didn't have faith in them to bring themselves to pass in the believer yeah. Hebrews chapter 11 and then verse 5 by faith Enoch was translated that he should not what see death, see death. specifically says it here so you can't get all weird over it he didn't die he went up into heaven and is there to this very day yeah. unless by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him is this a big deal to God yes yeah it's a big deal but it's not a big deal to God because he does this is he does this it's this is this is the realm he lives in right and was not found because God had translated him for before say before. before before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God did Enoch please God he could testify to the fact that he pleased God he was certainly one who was willing and could receive it was he willing mm -hmm. could he receive it he proved he could receive it and did receive it if you can receive it mm -hmm. say if I can receive it. If, I can receive it if you can receive it this pleases God if you can receive it well everybody else doesn't receive it no kidding but I'm not talking to everyone else I'm talking to you if you can receive it hey those are the words of Jesus mm -hmm. If you can receive it this pleases God now I'm gonna say something cuz what if I was here before you've you've heard there several times in the past you've heard 
preachers that seem to go off the deep end and, and all of a sudden they start calling themselves Elijah right Have you heard this yeah I can name a few John Alexander Dowie was one of them he eventually called himself Elijah you are not Elijah we saw what Elijah did he went and he came and then he died and now he's in heaven mm -hmm. this is John the Baptist got his head cut off are you here but the question could be again stretching you what if I was here before you are not Elijah you may be Enoch Enoch is a type of the last day church and God is calling those of you who are willing to hear to turn your heads upwards and know that the things on earth are only the beginning for you great things await those who can believe things that others refuse to even hear but those words contain the ability to transport you from one place to the next from glory to glory in this place in Jesus name amen, amen. if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me Holy Ghost I thank you that you multiply my giving and increase it exponentially even unto the world which is to come I give you glory and praise in Jesus name Amen the Father is in heaven Jesus at his right hand Holy Ghost your God